This conference will now be recorded. Well, folks, I'd like to thank everybody for joining us for a professional services series session number 35. Uh, this one is on TWL. Um, my, I'm Brian Weaver. I'm the Vice President of Sales here at NSA. And I'm very happy to uh, have our um, other fellow NSA associates join us today to give us the session. Uh, Brian Jones, who is our VP of Technology, and Barry Cooper, who is our business consultant. Uh, as you know, the session is being recorded and everybody that's attending will get a copy of the session uh, that'll follow 24 to 48 hours following uh, the session presentation. I would ask that you, if you do have questions that you enter them into the chat box and we will get those addressed at the end of the session today. And with that, uh, Brian, I'd like to turn it over to you, my friend. Sure, thank you, Brian. Um, uh, our, as Brian mentioned, our session today is on uh, modernizing TWLRF. Um, we're going to specifically focus on the TWLRF application, not uh, not a full blown everything you need to know about TWL, but but TWLRF. Uh, with that said, a little bit about myself. Um, my name is Brian Jones. I am the Vice President of Technology uh, with NSA. Um, my my purpose or my job is really to, to to think outside the box a little bit and figure out innovative ways to use um, the software and technology to improve uh, business processes. Um, what you're going to see today is 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 some of that, uh, some work we've done for uh, some customers in the past, and it's it's gone over well. So uh, we've decided to you know push it out more to the masses. Um, with me, I have Barry Cooper. Um, Barry is a business consultant uh, with NSA. Uh, he's worked in distribution and manufacturing uh, for 20 plus years and has been involved with, uh, with TWL and TWL implementations, um, again, for, for just about that, that amount of time as well. Um, a little bit about the uh, the agenda or what we're going to do here. Um, I'm going to give a short little presentation, probably 10 minutes or so of of PowerPoints. Uh, we're going to discuss why why we would want to modernize or adjust the TWL RF screens and, and some of the benefits. Um, we'll show uh, TWL RF uh, the traditional way. We'll show the HTML version of TWL, which is the, 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 the new new release stuff that Infor has. Um, and we'll also show some of the things that, that we're able to do um, with the TWL interface to make it more user-friendly and, and, and fit maybe fit your business better. Um, then Barry will give a, a demonstration of, of the software um, and talk about some of the things we can do. And once, once that's done, then we'll go on to a question and answer. Um, as Brian mentioned, um, if you do have questions as things are going along, put them in the chat. Otherwise, uh, we'll open it up uh, again at the end of the session and, and we can hopefully have some, some good interaction back and forth on uh, questions and things like that on, on what you've seen and, and what we can do. Um, so, so to get right into it here, um, technology is is been rapidly advancing we, we all know that just 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 the way you know the way things have, have moved along um, and what we found is that warehouses have been a little slow to adapt to that um, traditional warehouse uh, scanners and warehouse equipment have been basically tap and scan you know um, here I've got a, a, a older Telzon unit which you know again back in the Back in the 90s and, and early 2000s, these, these were typically the devices that you'd use in the warehouse. And it was very purpose built. You know, it scan a barcode, you maybe type something, and you move on to your next, to your next task. Um, but what we're seeing is that, you know, again, tech technology has moved forward. People, people nowadays aren't really aren't used to these things anymore. They're more, you know, they're more cell phones or touchscreen devices or even you know more modern touchscreen devices with with keyboards on them 
Um, and there's a lot more that we can do with these devices than just a, a typical, you know, again, scan a barcode and, and, and enter. Um, we've got tap, we've got touch, we've got swipe, we've got voice, and people are using this stuff in their, you know, in their day-to-day -day life. Everybody's got a cell phone nowadays. Everybody's got a touch screen, smart cell phone nowadays. So why not bring some of that technology um, again to, to our, our, our warehouse operations? Um, and one of the challenges we've had with that though is again, TWL is designed as a Telnet SSH type application, green screen stuff. And, and you'll see we've, we've taken some of, some of that and, and changed some of that. One of the other things um, that, that warehouses typically have today is a big investment uh, in equipment, software, and, and people. Um, handhelds are expensive. You know, they range anywhere from 1500 to 3000 um, bucks a unit, you know, all, all said and done. And it's, it's difficult to just say, okay, I'm going to replace all my legacy stuff with a, you know, with a fancy new touch, touch type handheld. Um, I've got, you know, a big investment in old stuff. My people know how to use it, all that kind of stuff. So, so one of the things that, that we have to consider is as we look at new ways of doing things and new technologies, how do we continue to get the most out of our, out of our old equipment um, as we migrate to, you know, again, oops, I get all crazy here, as we migrate to the, to the newer, uh, um, to the newer, newer systems. Um, let's go to the next one here. So, you know, typical devices, um, typical devices in, in, in the world today, again, like I said, left, left side of the screen here are, are common, um, what I would say, legacy type devices. Again, it's a Windows Mobile, it might be a DOS, it might be um, a custom OS type device. Um, that's, that's legacy stuff. Right side of the screen, you're gonna see, you know, more of an Android device or an iOS device. Um, Again, which 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 users are more accustomed to? Um, they provide larger real estate, touch apps, touch screens. Again, like I said before, people are used to using their cell phones, um, and we can also do more with these devices again than just traditional, like I said, scan and you know scan and 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 hit the keyboard. Uh, we could do things, and we've got customers doing things such as email on the devices, communications. On the devices, um, Microsoft Teams is a you know is a big thing nowadays. Um, the the newer devices can all run Microsoft Teams. They've all got cameras. Um, we can do things like take pictures of product, and if you've got the uh, Infor document management, the IDM app loaded on the on the device, we could take a picture of a damaged product. Uh, send it off to IDM, and it's available right back at the, you know, back at the corporate office to see to see what it is. Um, we've got pic people doing pictures of things like assemblies, so they'll take a, you know, they'll put something together. They might take a picture of the pallet uh, before it goes out to prove that hey, nothing's damaged or everything's here. Um, all of that can be done on these new handhelds um, because they're also kind of standard, you know, and I'll say standard again, being Android and iOS. There are thousands of apps available for these. So just about anything that you want to do um, is available to be to be loaded on these, but you also have to, you know, keep it in control and 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 uh, you know do what the purpose of these 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 are. So um, you know, TWL, let's let's talk a bit about that for a second. Um, if you look at the screens, screens here, this is what TWL looks like today. Um, left side is the traditional TWL RF that, that everybody's used to. If you've seen TWL, that's that's what it looks like. Um, it's it's designed again, like I said, for the for the the device with the keyboard, um, not touch screen friendly at all. You can't, you know, I can't push on the number one there and have it go to number one, that kind of thing. So it's you know, it's 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 green screen stuff. The right side of the screen here is what the uh, the new HTML5 interface looks like, um, and Barry Barry will show a little bit about this. Um, it is more touch enabled, but not really. 
Um, really what, T what uh, Infor has done so far is they've pretty much taken the TWLRF stuff and they moved it into HTML5 so it's not running through an, through an emulator. Um, and, and we're going to show you in a second kind of what, what we've done with some of this. Um, some of the problems with, with this are it takes a lot of, of uh, tribal knowledge and training and things like that to know how to, you know, how to get through the screens. There are function keys. Uh, there are shortcuts, things like that that aren't that aren't user intuitive. takes takes training and 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 a lot like that, a lot of stuff like that. So what we're trying to do is is make it quicker to deploy, easier for the user to use, um, and things like that. So what what we're able to do, and let me say, show you the next screen, is we're able to take um, and again we've we've done this for some customers. We're able to take the interface and modernize it for really a, a, a touch screen type device. So this is, this is essentially the same TWL screens you've seen on, on the previous slide, but we've basically put a layer on top of it that allows us to touch enable it and customize it to the job function. So uh, as you look at this screen, um, the, the things on the right are hotkeys, you'd have to know the function keys, or it might be several key presses to get to those to those quick quick launch things. Here we've done it just as a just as a a, a, a touch button. Left side is a touch button, that type of thing, and it doesn't require a, a keyboard. Um, so what this allows us to do is it allows us to modernize the interface to make it more again user friendly. Again, it's, it's more like the cell phone that people are used to. It becomes more certainly more intuitive. You can actually look at the screen and, and, and figure things out. Thus, it reduces the learning curve, speeds a user through uh, entry and navigation. And uh, it, is, it is, again, more of, I'm going to say, more of a familiar interface to them. So thus, the idea there is it's going to reduce errors, too. Um, the other thing that can be done with this is we can add color. To highlight things, um, and you're going to see you're going to see that um, we can add hotkeys, as you, as you saw on my previous screen. We've got hotkeys, uh, images, highlighting, um, and even branding. Um, you know, instead of just the plain old green green screen stuff, you know, we can have your logo, we can have pictures, we can have things like that on on the uh, the entry screens. Um, we can we can personalize things. So if you know if you've got a a job specific user say say a person only does picking in your warehouse well why display all of the options and all of the choices on the screen to them why not direct them to their to their job function we have the ability to to do that we can just show them things that are specific to their their job functions and and needs um, again reduces the risk of entry, things, things like that, or, or problems, or people screwing around on the handouts, that kind of stuff. Um, we can direct people to the workflow that you want, you know, um, and how it works in, in your warehouse. Um, again, like I said, remove unwanted need, un unwanted and unneeded screens and fields. Um, we can remove abbreviations to things. You know, TWL has a lot of little uh, abbreviations that you have to know that, hey, this means that or whatever. We can display things in plain English. Um, we also have the ability um, to do some language translation as well. So if you've got a, a multilingual workforce, say you might have some Spanish speaking people or French speaking people, um, we have the ability to, to, to translate the screens um, you know, it's it's a little seedy, but translated into um, French, Spanish, wh whatever it may be, and you know, and it's it more fits what that person is used to. Uh, so, with that said, um, let me answer any any questions we might have, and then I'm going to turn it over to turn it over to Barry here a little bit, and and I'll have him show show some things. Um, one of the questions I, I do have here um, is in for planning on migrating TWL RF to TWL HTML5 solution. Yeah, there is, there is, and, and we'll show that there is a TWL HTML5 solution 
today, available today. I believe you have to be running uh, 11, 21, 9 or 10, which means you've pretty much got to be running Cloud Suite to be able to, to, be able to use the HTML5 version. Um, and really the HTML5 version is pretty much just an HTML version of the of the character green screens. Um, so I hope I hope I answered that one. And again, we'll we'll talk talk more to that. Um, Barry, otherwise, are, are ready to go? You know, ready to go. Make let's you let's my, show them what they came here for. So make you my guy here. Uh, let me find you. Barry Gilbert, where are you? All right, I'm gonna make you the presenter, Barry. You are the presenter. I'm gonna turn my camera off. All right, folks. So what we're showing today is a live demonstration on a Cypher Labs RS50 device. Uh, the device is kind of irrelevant to uh, what we're gonna show. It just happens to be the device I have in front of me today. Uh, the software works with or without keyboards. Um, so you, it, uh, if you have the old style with the, uh, still with the uh, pistol grip and keyboard, you can still use this and uh, still control the screens and the, and the uh, interaction. So what I have in front of me here is the session manager that you get when you launch the uh, software called Velocity. It allows me to deploy multiple versions of this software uh, to the device. And as a user, then I can choose which one I'm going to log into. Uh, for this instance, I'm going to use the uh, session one. So this is taking the standard green screen and changing the uh, user interface to a more modern. And I can actually switch back and forth. If I turn it back to native mode, you'll see that this is actually the same screen that you're used to seeing uh, when logging into TWL. I've just taken and updated that screen to a more modern look. Now you'll also notice that I removed fields from that screen. So I'm able to guide the user through their uh, process. Rather than having to have everything on the screen at one time, I'm able to pair it to uh, slim it down and only present them with the relevant information at that time. So I can go ahead and log in as I normally would. I can go ahead and put my password in. And before I hit enter, a couple things to notice on this screen. Number one, I've got a logo in here. So I'm able to brand uh, the session to my company. I can have multiple logos if I want. I can you know, pretty much display any image I'd like to. Number two, I have a logout button. So if you uh, remember, to, you know, with TWL today, in order to actually log out, it's the ambiguous zero and enter to actually log you out. And I, I know most people forget to do that, uh, and it can leave hanging sessions out there. So I'm able to actually add feature, add information to the screen that doesn't otherwise exist there. And behind the scenes, this button simply does the zero and enter for the user. So I can go ahead and I'm gonna hit enter to go log in. Now you'll notice that it, it skipped a question. Um, actually, never mind, it did not, but it, it's, uh, it switched over to my green screen, right? Because this screen is not mapped to my more modern uh, uh, interface, the software is set to go ahead and just flip right back to the standard UI. This allows you, allows you to program your most common screens, deploy them out, get them working, and then work on the uh, less common screens in the background. So you don't have to go through every one of TWL's oh, 500 plus screens all at one time, get them updated and deploy them out. You can pick and choose as you go, and this will just seamlessly move back and forth. So because I'm an admin, I can choose my warehouse. I'm gonna go ahead and hit enter here. You'll see a brief pop up there where it uh, showed a message where I, scripting can be used. 
So if you remember your login process to TWL, it should have taken me down to the question of machine, no machine. But I have a script in place that says, when you see the cursor in this position on this screen, go ahead and auto send an enter character. That reduces the amount of keystrokes that the users have to do. And if you, ne if you never use um, the connected printers, why have the uh, users have to, to hit the enter button there? Now again, that's taking me right into the standard TWL menu. I'm gonna go ahead and switch back to native mode here. And you can see the, the standard uh, TWL menu here is still running in the background, but I've, I've simply just changed that to be a more user-friendly uh, interface. It looks like an app that would be running on my cell phone, right? Um, I'm able to add these hotkeys over here. So these are just basically just hit that and it'll just take you right into that function instead of having to drill down through the menus to get them. If we're all familiar with, uh, say, order picking, right? I want to pick by wave. Normally, I would have to hit five, one, and one to get there or I could just simply hit the pick wave button and it jumps me right to there. So now it just saved me two keystrokes that I would that uh, normally I would have to hit. Also on this screen here, I'm able to add again, additional buttons. So now I have a view all waves button. Again, removing that ambiguous, we'll just press enter in order to get that question to view all waves. I've just added that button. I'm also able to add buttons telling the user how to go backwards rather than having to remember that F4 or X or sometimes it's F3. I'm able to just program that right onto the screen so that users don't have to just know those things. I also added a jump back to the main menu rather than, again, rather than having to F4 back and then X back to the main menu. I'm able to just jump right there. I can click that, and now it just takes me right on back. Again, I've added a logout button to the main screen. This will take you completely out of TWL. So if I jump back to my pick wave, you'll notice here my keyboards, as they pop up, my keyboard can be specific to the field so that I can program keyboards that, in this case, the wave field is only a number field. It's only numeric. So I have only a numeric keyboard popping up. So I can have many different kinds of keyboards that can be used specifically for the field that they're on, but, excuse me, rather than having just the alphanumeric keyboard always popping up. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna hit the view all waves button. You'll notice that it takes me then right into viewing all of the waves. Again, I've added more buttons to the screen. As these functions do exist in TWL today, but how many people know that you can hit T or B to either go to the top of the list or B to go to the bottom of the list, right? So instead, I've just added that right onto the screen to say, if I wanna to go to the top of the list, I can hit that. If I wanna to go to the end of the list, I can hit that. I can also do page up, page downs, or I can do line up, line down. So I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna line down, and I wanna go ahead and pick wave 31. Again, this is all touch screen. And I'm gonna hit enter on that. I'm also able to interject business logic into the session. In this case, I popped up a message that says the customer does not accept chargeable pallets. I can make this message be anything I really want it to be. It forces the user to hit OK. I can scan, I can um, do anything I want, but it's not going to let me go past here until I actually hit OK on that OK. So you know the users are seeing those messages. So I'm gonna hit okay there. Again, now you can see I've 
modernize the questions for TWL. You can clean them up. You can add additional wording into them so that they're not confusing to the users. You can tell them exactly what uh, they need to know. In this case, do I want to use a cart for picking? I'm going to say no. And it's going to start taking me into that way. Again, here I can add, I've added a button for all zones, all aisles. I've added our the go back or all the way back to the main menu. Even though I'm already into the picking process, I can still jump all the way back to the main menu. I'm going to go ahead and say I want to see all zones, all aisles. So again, here you can see how we've the screen is just mu that much more colorful. I'm highlighting pertinent information up on top. So I'm highlighting the location. I can highlight that in any color I would like. I can, as I scroll through, so I'm gonna hit my scroll down. You can see that information up on top is still changing as it does today. But again, my highlighting really shows me what I'm doing. I've put on-screen buttons for that I can, how to scroll right rather than again having to know that I can do that, I have, I've added a button there for scroll right. You'll notice that there's a space available to the left there because there's no scroll left. At this screen, you can't scroll left. But if I hit scroll right, now my scroll left button pops up, telling the user that you can go either right or left from where they're currently at. So I'm going to go back here. You also notice again, I've added the add item button. So if you're allowing your users to add items right from the floor, rather than having to just know the control that it's control plus A, again, I have a button there that allows, allows it to just add that item. Same thing with the F6 to see item detail. Again, I've added a button right to the screen to be able to see that. Improving the user's interaction with, with TWL. When I'm ready to pick, I've selected my item. I can hit enter. So again, you can see that the screen's been kind of cleaned up. I've removed all of the unnecessary information from the screen. Things like pick ID. If I go back over here to the native mode. You can see up on top, there's the pick ID. Users don't know what that means. They don't care. They only care about what the location is, what item and what quantity are they going after, right? So instead of having this busy screen where they're having to try to find the information they're looking for, we're able to clean all of that up, highlight the pertinent information for that particular field they're on so that they can quickly see what they need to do. So as I'm a user, I'm going to go to my location. And if I can find my barcode here with my location on it. We scan our location. And we'll notice that the information on the screen, I now have been taken down into the item field. My highlighting has changed. Now instead of highlighting the location, I'm highlighting the item that they're going after. And I'm also highlighting the description. So if I have multiple products in that uh, location, I'm now showing them, here's the particular item you're going after. I can, oops. I can scan my item. So now it takes me down to the quantity field. And again, you'll see that I'm highlighting the quantity on top with the unit of measurement that, that's needed. Because it's now a user, the user needs to have interaction into the system. I've popped up the appropriate keyboard. This is a quantity field, so I'm only accepting numbers into that field. So I can go ahead on the screen, I can press my quantity I need, hit enter, and you'll see how the keyboard comes and goes, right? I can control by field when that keyboard pops up. So now I'm at my cart and ID field, again, just like I normally would. I'm going to scan my cart and ID, and it just takes me right to the next item. Nothing's changed with how you actually use TWL, but I'm able to improve that user interface for them. 
making it much easier to bring new people up to speed and making your existing users that much more efficient. Again, I can have buttons here. So I can either go back, so I can go back to the grocery list, or I could jump all the way back to the main menu from here. If I hit my little hamburger menu down in the lower right hand corner, I'm able to add a second session. So just as you do today, uh, you can run multiple sessions at the same time. And this is how I would switch back and forth between them. So it, have, it has the session one here, and I can add a second one for session two. The hamburger option also allows me to do screen capture. So if I'm a user and I'm having problems with the screen or I want to map new screens, from the device, I can turn on screen capture, start going through the screens, and it will record them and save that right to the device. I then use that inside of the, the designer tool to make my new screens. I can also add things to the what I call the slider menu here, which is, a, is the one large bar with two short. I can add quick keys to jump to functions. So I might be in the middle of picking something and maybe I'm in the middle of receiving something and I need to go do something else. Maybe that button doesn't exist on my current screen, but I can add them in here to what's called the context menu. So then I can just jump right to them. So if I click on reprint shipper, of course it's gonna get mad at me because I haven't finished what I was working on here. Uh, but if I was maybe in a stock move or something else where I wasn't in the middle of trying to pick that, it would allow me then to jump to the reprint shipper function. So if I jump back to the main menu here and I can go hit that, and now it takes me right into the print packing list Again, so I don't have to just know that it's F9 to go do that, which on some devices, that might even be multiple keystrokes to get to that. And I can click my go back button here because I don't want to do that right now. And again, as you can see, I can seamlessly switch between the modern screen and the standard green screen. Now, because I have a cell phone style device, I don't have a keyboard, but I do because I can still bring up the on-screen keyboard. And if I needed to, I can swipe through all the available keyboards to get what to get something that I wasn't necessarily on that original keyboard. So if I was uh, looking for, um, you know, if I needed letters versus numbers, again, I can swipe back and forth here or I can get my special character keyboard. Um, if I was looking to type in my password and it had a special character in it, I'm able to switch through all of the different keyboards that are available to me. Again, I can also minimize that as well. Jumping into, again, so I can go into um, other functions on the device. And again, you can see it's just gonna seamlessly move between them. I'm also able to add jump functions from one menu to the next. So again, I'm just pre-programming the exact functions from where I'm currently sitting in the RF to get to that new function. So maybe I was, I was finishing up my stock move. Now I wanna go back to picking a wave. Instead of having it again, hit that X511, I can just jump right to it from here and it does all of the keystrokes for me in the background. This doesn't work just with TWL. You could make this work with pretty much any software that, al that uh, allows you to capture it through, this, through that Telnet session. So something like IBC, it would work through as well. Can you show for a second, Barry? Um, I know people that want to see the HTML5 interface a little bit. Absolutely. So if we switch over to that, so HTML5, relatively new, 
How do I use it? Well, it works through a web page, just like CSD does. So you have to uh, open up a web browser on the device and put the URL in to log in to Mingle. Now, I've already logged into Mingle at this point on my device. So as a user, uh, warehouse user, I would have to log into Mingle. Then I have to choose the nine dots up here, and I can't remember what the fancy name for that is. Then I have to go find TWL, which has to be turned on for HTML5. I can select TWL. And we'll give it a second here to load. Maybe. There we go. So now I can go ahead, I can choose my user, which is me. So I'm going to go ahead and sign in. And now I'm taken to the main menu for TWL. The buttons are touch enabled so that I can just click on whichever one I want. So if I want order picking, I can tap on that. And it is very sensitive. So here, as you can see, it drives me into the next menu. So it's still the same menus that you're used to seeing today with uh, the, the character version. So I can do a pick options number one. I can choose by pick by wave. If I want to do a truck ballot, or I can hit enter to get past that, maybe. There we go. And you can see as the keyboard is kind of popping up and going away, that's all controlled by the uh, uh, HTML5 code that it's just going to pop up the keyboard for you in the fields. I'm going to hit enter because I want to see all the waves. Again, now we get to see our grocery list of all of the waves. So instead of scrolling through them, you have the arrows that you can use to select the wave that you want. You can still kind of scroll to the right there to see more information about it. I'm gonna hit that little arrow, maybe. There we go. And you'll see the screen, the screen will start shifting around um, depending on what pop-ups there are. So if I want to go into a zone, I want to hit enter to go on past. And now it'll show me my two picks. So instead of having the detail up on top that you can scroll through, now everything is just out inside of the grid and I can scroll to the right to see what I'm going to pick. Once I wanna pick some, I choose something to pick, I'm gonna hit that, that arrow. And it's gonna go ahead and drive me in there. So I'm still seeing the same exact fields that I were I was always seeing before. The layout has changed quite a bit as far as where all the information is. So I can click into that ver that location field. Again, I can scan my location. It'll move me over to the item. I can scan my item and kind of move through that way. If I want to go back. I scroll back up to the top of the screen here. And at the top, we have our arrow here. And I can hit my arrow to go back. And it'll take me backwards. So they've replaced the F4 with the uh, back arrow. Okay, I can continue driving back. If I wanted to sign out, I have to hit the in my little dots. Because I've logged into uh, Mingle, I first have to go ahead and sign out of TWL. So that I keep going backwards. And there is a, 
There it is. The TWL menu. So I can expand that. Scroll to the bottom. I have a sign out option there. I first have to sign out, sign out of TWL. Then I can go ahead and sign out of Mingle as well. So to do that, I hit my three little dots, click on my person, and then I can choose sign out at the bottom there. So when you think about using HTML5, it's basically you're using CSD on an RF device. It functions the same way. Uh, one thing with uh, HTML5 right now, is you can only be logged into one session. So, and that not that's not limited to just TWL RF, that's limited to CSD as well. So you can either be logged into CSD or TWL RF. Should we open it up to questions here? Um, there was a there is a question out there. What what device is this being demoed um, on? This this happens to be a, it's called a Cipher Lab. Um, what is it? RS fifty one. RS fifty or RS fifty one is the is the current model. Um, it's an Android Android handheld. Zebra has something similar. If there's a Zebra TC seventy um, or a Honeywell CN eighty are very similar to this as well. Um, it's a modern Android Android device, but it doesn't have a keyboard. Um, there's a keyboard version of this. It's a CK90, CN90, um, which the screen is a little bit smaller, but it adds a keyboard to it. Um, this would, you know, this would technically work on your cell phone too. Uh, the problem with Problem with cell phones, though, they don't have good Bluetooth scanners or readers, and they're not very uh, um, hardened, if that makes sense. You drop your cell phone, it's going to break, um, unless you get a really big outer box type thing. Um, the uh, term, what is the name of the terminal services? Um, the, uh, the terminal emulator is Wavelink, um, and it's Wavelink uh, Velocity is the the software that is used on um, on the handheld itself. Uh, that's Wavelink. Uh, Telnet's been around for years and years and years, and this is just the latest version of it. Um, the remote controller, the mobile device manager that we're using here, where Barry's doing a Barry, basically Barry's doing a remote control of his session. He he literally has a handheld in his hand. Um, but we're controlling it uh, through a piece of software called SODI, um, which is actually awesome for troubleshooting uh, problems that people have on their handhelds because you can take take remote control of their session and they can show you and you know and all of that kind of stuff um, and deploy software and you know lock it down um, and, and whatever. Um, so that's some of the things we've we've, we've got going on there. Yeah, Brian and Barry, I've got a couple of questions as well. So one is, can personalization be done on a profile basis, receiving and picking as an example? Uh, absolutely. You can create multiple uh, profiles and deploy them to the device. Or if your devices are separated, that these devices are only receiving, then you only push the receiving to those devices. But you can certainly have... Um, multiple profiles on one device. Excellent. And I got another one as well. So can you make uh, H5 HTML as a default? Barry, uh, I, I, guess I, I don't under, quite understand yeah. the question there. Um, y yes, you could do, you, you could do either both or all. Um, is, is uh, I think the answer to that, um, as Barry showed, the HTML5 is basically a login through Mingle through a TWL app. It uses Mingle to authenticate to the app, which then you authenticate inside of TWL if you're a TWL user. Um, I, I don't know if that answers it or not. 
Yeah. So the, yeah, the question, the specification was when you are lot when you log into Mingle, can you make that as the default? Oh yes, just just like right, yes, just just like you can, yes, just like you can with uh, SX or CSD, you you can make you you move it to the top left corner of the uh, the waffle waffle menu, I think is the name for it, Barry. Waffle um, menu, yeah. You move it to the top left corner, and that's that's the application that you get when you log in. So yes. Great, and that's all the private messages I have. I would certainly ask that anybody else that has questions, please uh, please ask now. And don't be afraid to talk to or unmute your, I, I, you allow them to unmute themselves, Brian? Yeah, they want? can unmute themselves, and those that I've muted, I can unmute as well. Sure. No, I'll, I'll do that. Yeah, again, our our need our need here for 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 the customers we've done this for, it has been to okay take TWL make it easier to deploy on the the workforce. What what you find nowadays is is there's a lot of churn in the warehouse workers and things like that, and and bringing a person up to speed on the traditional green screen stuff is is slow. Um, this is way more intuitive. Um, HTML5 is a step forward. That is more intuitive as well. Um, and and in, in, in four continues to develop that too. There are some shortcomings, um, but it, but it's getting there. And again, this is a solution that we've got available literally today um, for, for TWL. Yeah, and, and one thing too uh, to take note of, you'll notice here as I sit at the main screen, the choices for the menus are, are far less than what the standard green screen offers. So where the TWL security leaves off, you can utilize this to, to um, an additional security la layer by simply just removing those functions from the device. So they just, they don't have access to it. Great. So I'll ask a question, guys. So in addition to NSA being able to help create these menus to make the navigation and the use of this so much simpler, uh, can they come to NSA as well for the actual devices themselves? And do we offer a variety of them? Um, yes. So, so yeah, that's a good question, Brian, as to, okay, what's, what's necessary to make this go, I guess, is a, is a, is a way to phrase that. Um, you need you need a handheld device. Um, NSA can certainly help you with the handheld device. Um, we typically deal with Zebra and Cipher Lab devices. Now Cipher Lab is is um, it's uh, basically a Zebra clone, a little little less expensive, but a little more um, I don't know. They're, they're a little quicker to react than than a big company like Zebra. Um, same thing, like I said, is that it's basically the same as a Zebra TC70. You know, if you go to go to Target, you'll see uh, see the the Zebra models of these sitting around. That's what that's what they use. Um, so so it requires a you know it requires requires a handheld. Um, it requires the the Velocity Wavelink software itself. Um, that's basically the terminal emulator for the the handheld um it's fairly low cost um and it's just just the piece of software that makes this happen um again these are android type devices so just about anything in the android store is available to be loaded on these like i mentioned a, a, a key application that customers load on here is email teams um and document management <laughs> those are the those are the three most common and then certainly the warehouse stuff if if they allow them to do other things um and then the the final component to this is is basically the nsa know-how or the or the you know the basically screen setups um that we've already you know again we've we've already done it for twl and and ibc um like i said we've got customers that are that are using this today um and uh, you know we can provide the the know-how and the knowledge and the training as well um, to customize this yourself. It's not it's not programming per se. Uh, there is a there's basically a screen designer where it's drag and drop and and you know once you once you spend a couple hours with it, uh, if you've got a person 
who's into this kind of stuff, they can they can make and move these things around, um, and and then we can support it that type of thing. So does that help, Brian? No, it's great. Thank you. So I guess we'll just leave it uh, open here for another minute or so in case there's any other questions that folks uh, that are on the call might want to ask. Okay, I don't see any other questions coming in. Um, certainly would like to thank uh, Brian and Barry for the session today. Uh, very informative, a lot of detail here. Again, everybody that's on the session today will get a copy of the webinar. And I certainly thank you for taking the time out of your day to attend this. And please contact us if this is something that you're interested in. Uh, more than happy to uh, engage and, uh, and help you with this particular part of your business. Thank you all for attending. Thanks, everyone. Thank you.